oyendo una canción que yo pedí. Me están sirviendo ahorita mi I used to go to the bars all the time, you know. Just to hang out. I'd make friends there, you know. Orale, here comes Johnny. Set him up. Have another drink, yes. Well, well, I enjoyed myself, and so what if I had hangovers? It was worth it. But then I started losing control. And I remember leaving the bar, but after that, I don't know what happened to me until I was involved in an accident, two-car collision. And that's when it woke me up. I really didn't care one way or another about what was going on. I was just drinking almost around the clock and just waiting to die. Like, uh, I really didn't care about nothing. And uh, I, I used to drink just to uh, have fun with my friends. And uh, pretty soon I just couldn't let it go. <laughs> I just kept on drinking. My family meant everything to me, but I started to spend more and more time drinking. It got so bad that my wife said she was going to leave me. And finally, she did leave me. And I just kept on drinking. Have another one, I see. She took the kids. Alcohol is a serious problem in the Spanish-speaking community. And it has been for a number of years, and it's only recently that it's received the attention that it deserves. And it's greater than the problem that you would find in the general population. Different studies will tell you different rates, but generally you can say that it's anywhere from twice to a third higher than it is anywhere else. When you're dealing with frustration, okay, our society is, is, you know, it's a fast life. They have no money. I mean, it's a good thing to go to a bar and sit down and have a beer and and drink, you know, your troubles away. I like to have a good time, you know, so whenever there was a wedding or about these moments, I drink. Whenever I was out with the guys or working on the car or, or just hanging out, well, I drink. And when people would tell me that I was becoming an alcoholic, I'd shine them on. Hell, I'd say everybody drinks in the barrio. I started drinking when I was 13 years old. I was born in the barrio, and it was a thing to do, get loaded. And the crazier things you did, the more important type of person you were. Well, you see, when I was about 10 years old, I used to hang around with older people than me, and they were uh, getting high and stuff. So uh, those were my friends. I used to get high. Drinking was part of it, part of growing up, part of belonging, you know. The guys drank, you belong with them. If you didn't, you just didn't. And everyone wants to belong someplace. Well, I didn't know I was an alcoholic at first. I thought alcoholics were just skid row bums, you know? And that wasn't me, not Johnny Hernandez. And so what you find with, uh, with an individual who comes into treatment, is that uh, the first thing he'll say is, well, I'm not really an alcoholic. I, I don't go on, uh, on these drunks on skid row. 
I didn't think of myself as an alcoholic. I said, well, heck, no, I'm not an alcoholic. I got a job. I got my home. I support my family. With me, I had problems in almost every major area of my life, but I didn't consider myself an alcoholic because I was able to work every day. No matter how bad I felt, I went to work. Another thing I used to say, I can quit when I want to. The problem is I never quit. It was just a week after week after week. And yet when you start to explain to him what an alcoholic really is and what the symptoms really are, there's this kind of uh, revelation that occurs where he says, oh, I may just be an alcoholic. Right. So this is kind of a little, uh, little blood music. Chicano! After my wife left me, that's when my drinking started getting worse. I walked the streets drunk. And I see these people and they were happy. Happy and sober. Me, I was just hurting inside. Thinking about what I had lost. I began to blame everyone and everything for why I drank. My wife, the pressure of supporting the kids. By then I had lost my job and couldn't find another one. I had no money. All of these things caused me to drink. And in the barrio, everywhere I turned, there were reminders of an easy way to forget. With a booze, I could take the problems. And of course, I could drink a lot, okay. I was a macho. Chicano! A lot of us Chicanos have that idea to be a macho, you have to drink. My personal belief is that's bringing a false courage. It's not your true self. You need that drink to bolster your, your courage up. I had that macho image. You know, I was always putting down people. And only through alcohol could I do that. I didn't really want to do that, but that's how I was taught. You know, beat up on your own lady and uh, be the bad dude. My interpretation of machismo is um, loyalty, respect, and this, if you would change it into a positive way in the treatment plan, well, this would help them. They want to keep their um, respect and their loyalty. Um, they don't want to be, you know, degraded. They shouldn't have to be. The concept of machismo, for example, is one of the cultural factors that uh, has been said to contribute to uh, drinking, but it also contributes to the cessation of drinking because if you're macho, you're strong, you're able to do what's right, you uh, care for your family, you are a um, self-supporting individual. One, two. My drinking got so bad that they didn't want me in the bars where I used to hang out at. You're too rowdy, they'd say. You're a drunk. So I would just find another bar to go to. And another, and another. Set him up, they say. I knew I had to stop, but I couldn't stop. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't stop. It's something unbelievable, but it's true. You have those cravings, uh, like uh, you're, you're just waiting for the weekend, waiting to get paid, so you can go out and have a few drinks. I got downtown, and I went into one of those Main Street bars. The next thing I knew, when I woke up again, the next thing I remember, I was in a tank at the glass house, they call it laying there by a, one of those open toilets, you know. I had vomit all over me. I had, all I had on was a t-shirt. I didn't have any of the clothes that I had started out the home with that morning. Where I went to, I don't know. I knew I was in trouble when I woke up one morning in the hospital, a detox ward. It was Tuesday and I couldn't remember anything since Friday. At the hospital, I learned I was sick. Alcoholism is a disease. My body was so addicted to alcohol that when I didn't drink, I'd have withdrawal symptoms, the shakes, hallucinations. 
By that time, I was bleeding internally, and my liver was shot. I knew I had to stop, or I was going to kill myself. Alcoholism is a disease, and if it's a Chicana woman or a male, it, it affects them in the same way. I went to pieces almost. I was just, uh, I started uh, having sweats, cramps. I was here for about six months. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know my name. Automatically, I go into a blackout now. So therefore, I know I'm alcoholic because of it. I went three times to hospitals. I was hospitalized for the same thing, for detox. And the last time I was in, I was determined to stop. And I went through hell to stop. After I got out of detox, I went into a recovery home and started working on getting myself together. It wasn't easy, but I did have the help of other Chicanos who had also been alcoholics. With an alcoholic, I can open up and tell them exactly how I feel. And uh, I'm not uh, ashamed or afraid. Or, you know, the taboos of the past, of macho and all that, they don't hold me back, not with another alcoholic. Because I know that uh, he's trying to stay sober and so am I, so we're here to help each other out. Our culture plays an important role in the treatment of alcoholism. Uh, they're, right now, it's, they're not sensitive to our culture, and it's a big problem. There's no doubt in my mind, and in the minds of uh, many of the people who worked with the Hispanic, both uh, Chicanos and non-Chicanos, that the, the Chicano himself, the alcoholic, needs special kinds of services, and they have to be bilingual and bicultural. I'm getting myself back on my feet now. I've been sober for almost a year. I've gotten a job and I'm trying to spend more time with the kids. They're happy their old man ain't not drunk anymore. So am I. One of the things that most helps the Chicano is the strength of the family unit. They have an extended family, they have strong family ties, and very often the family can be very important in, in solving the problem. In East L.A., what we would like to do is keep the family unit together because that is in our culture. You know, that is what we're trying to be sensitive to. If I were to give any kind of advice to a family, it would be to the spouse or to the children. If someone you know is drinking too much, get some help and get it quick. How would you know if they, uh, they're having problems? Well, it's very simple. If they're drinking too much, if they're drinking all the time, if their personality or their attitudes change while they're drinking. If they're having trouble with drunk driving arrests or if they're getting arrested. If they're having trouble with their jobs. If they don't treat you well or if they're not uh, spending their money the way they should, get some help. 